Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to work on the 61 Apache, but we're actually going to work on this guy right here. Yeah, we're going to cut down the long bed step side into a short bed step side because we previously cut down the long bed pickup into a short bed pickup and we got to make the match. It's going to be awesome, except I'm doing the intro before I've actually done the job, so it might all go wrong. Stay tuned. When you shorten a 60 to 66 Chevy truck, ideally you take 12 inches out of the frame somewhere under the cab, and then you lop 8 inches off the end. You can check this link on how I shorten the frame. Exciting news, on a fleet side, you'd cut 12 and 8, out of the bed, but a step side is kind of screwy. These fenders are from the generation before, so they used these on the 50s. You can't actually cut 8 inches out of here because there's only 7 inches of space. So the back actually gets shortened 5 and a half inches, and the front gets shortened 14 and a half inches. Then it'll fit this. So I know some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, why would you shorten? A long bed step side. They're rare. They're uncommon. People love them. I don't like them. So I'm going to cut it down. This truck happened to be a long bed. I have a sawzall and a welder, and I'm not afraid to use them. In my mind, in my head, this is my last truck. Not my last project, but my last truck. When I hang up the keys at the end of my driving career, it's going to be these keys. This is my intention. So if I'm going to drive this until I can't drive anymore, I'm making it what I want. Sue me. Fight me. It's going to be okay. So, I've seen these shorten a couple different ways. I've seen these a couple different ways. Some folks will just choose somewhere in here and cut it, um, shorten it, while they're back together. And then you get a welded seam through here. If you're welding in the middle of a flat panel, you get the wonderful fun of trying to straighten that flat panel. It can be a bit of a challenge. So if I'm going to do that, I want to be close to something that will at least hold its shape. I have seen other guys cut it right down in the middle, and then they'll shorten it there, and everything comes back in, and they reattach the fenders. You can do that. There's a couple little differences in doing that one. If you want to get rid of the stake pocket, that's a good place to do that. So if you're going to cut out of the middle of the bed to shorten it, um, these ribs, these strengthening ribs, are going to get shorter, closer together. That might be an issue for you. It may not be an issue. The other thing that happens is none of the bolts that hold the fence, whoa, this thing's on wheels. Woo none of these bolts are going to match anymore, and now you've got to re-drill holes to put the fenders in the right place, and you've got to plug the holes that used to attach the fenders, which yeah, you can do that if that's what you want to. I have a plan that I think will work, um, and it's this. So my plan is, um, since the front stake pocket box, whatever it's called, this is the back, the front and the back are basically the same kind of shape, and you've got this folded edge right here, what I want to do is cut it on the other side of that flange and use this flange to keep this panel straight. That's my plan. Here's how it works. First, you're going to have to excuse all the oil all over the place. I hosed all the fasteners down with my favorite penetrant called Move It. Not sponsored, but this is sold by the stores that are closest to my house, so this is the one I use. Over here, I used a little surfacing sander Oh, to find the spot welds that hold this all together. And I'm going to drill out the ones I can't reach from the back side in here because I can't get to them. So I'll drill them on that side and then I'm going to slice right through the spot welds. Hopefully not cut right through the box flange on the other side and I will figure out what I'm going to do on the top here to try and save the stake pocket. If you want to get rid of the stake pockets this is the time to do that. Move, either cut it so that the pocket is filled in, or, or not, I guess. I'm going to keep the pockets, and then I will move and measure up here four and a half, five and a half inches. Cut exactly, perfectly five inches all the way down, and then this guy gets, I guess this piece gets moved right over to replace the section I'm cutting out, 
and then I can weld her up. Here's hoping. First thing I did with this is I took the steps off because they're going to get in the way. I'm going to shorten them a little bit later on, but that's not the big deal right now. So I just pull them off. I also did a wonderful slip. I jammed my, my arm into a rusty piece of metal. Don't worry. I get a tetanus shot every 10 years. I tend to be around rusty metal. Uh, you should get your tetanus shot. Always handy. Um, yeah. So here I am. I used, I think, an eighth-inch double-ended Princess Auto drill bit for drilling the centers of the spot welds. And then I used a spot weld drilling bit. Uh, I wrecked that one on this. I guess it's finally drilled its last hole, I guess, by the end of this. Anyways, drilled them all, and then I'm trying to figure out exactly how to cut, and you want to do some careful measurements. If you are drunk when you're doing your measurement, you're... Good luck trying to put this back together. You'd have like one side shorter than the other or at angles or whatever. So careful measurement. I'm using like a 16th. I think it's a 16th. Might be a 332nds. It's a very thin cutting disc. Maximum brand or something from Canadian Tire. I buy them when they go on sale. Um, lots of grinding dust all over the place. Uh, when you blow your nose after grinding all of this, don't be alarmed at the powdery goodness that comes out of your schnoz. Back came off, I cut away, I left part of the rail or the tube just to help guide everything into place. The braces are welded on to keep this thing from going completely funky once all the strength has been cut out of it. These C-clamps, man, they're just dandy. I bought those recently and really liked them when I was doing the floors on the cab and I went and bought two more. The back was easy to shorten. I'm not sure why I picked the back first, but I did. The front was a little different, finding the spot welds, drill them. Um, I was going to lay out with masking tape. That's why you see the tape around. But I found it was easy enough to just draw with a ballpoint pen to figure out where you wanted to cut. Just make sure you're consistent on which side of the ballpoint pen line you're using uh, so you don't cut one side like a sixteenth or collectively an eighth inch shorter than the other. Extra light, because when you get old, man, your eyes don't work all that well. When I put the wires in this shop and wired up all the lights, it was bright and I loved it. And that was like five years ago. Front piece cut out. Yay, both sides off. These trucks were originally made with uh, singles, single layers. So when you're chucking gravel or rocks or small children into the back of the bed, it's going to bow out the panels. Um, and over time, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So this panel was really bowed out from whatever had been thrown in here over the last 50 or 60 years. And I figured I can probably try to straighten this. If I can beat the heck out of it with a hammer, I can probably make it less messed up. If I can't, a new one is a Visa card and 200 bucks away. I could get a new one. But why not try? I got nothing to lose, right? If it's junk, it could be still junk if I mess it up. Here we go. Subliminal message alert. Uh-oh. Subscribe. Leave a comment below. This is the straightness. It's good enough for me. I feel the C is for cookie song. Now, if you're just here for... Um, how to shorten the bed, this isn't going to benefit you yet, but I'm going to be doing something with this later on because the truck is really lowered and I notched the frame four inches. I need to raise the bed floor. I don't want to step the floor over the notch in the frame. Uh, it's harder to haul a load of drywall that way. So this is part of my plan to raise the bed floor. Raising the bed floor is pretty easy. This part is actually the biggest challenge. The header part of the bed, I actually did refold four inches higher, and then I've got these spacers. Now, um, I had a bunch of discussions with myself, it was animated, about what kind of bed floor to put in. Originally, these were a southern yellow pine. The, my school can give me a sweet deal on red oak, but red oak is a very open, porous wood. It would cost me about 125 bucks in wood to redo the floor. White oak is not, good, is, is not as porous, so it's not going to soak up as much water and rot, but it's going to work out to 10 bucks uh, a board foot, and so that's 250 bucks to do the bed floor. I ended up choosing to do composite, uh, which required buying or having nine boards 
and ordering one extra bed strip. These are all new bed strips. So I'm sanding them and painting them, but if there's one thing I can't stand, it's bodywork. And here I've lacquer thinner, scuffing it up so I can spray epoxy primer, and I sanded so much I thought I would die. Oh my gosh. But I got over it and uh, sprayed the epoxy. Two coats. I don't know if I show both being sprayed. Honestly, you're watching paint dry in between, and who wants that? Leave a comment below if you want a video on watching paint dry. Although technically you're doing that. I put the front back on the bed, uh, scuffed up and cleaned up the join, and I sprayed it all with epoxy primer so that when I re-weld it all together, at least there's something in between the pieces of metal to try and slow down the onslaught of inevitable Chevrolet rust. Anyways, it welded together really nice. Bunch of welding, spottedy spot spot, and then I use, I've been grinding the beads down with... Uh, the cutoff disc on either my angle grinder or uh, zip disc, a uh, small die grinder kind of thing, and just weld, make it nice, try to make it pretty. Uh, I am no, by no means a good bodyman. I can get it to a pretty nice coat of Bondo, and that's about where I'm going to go with this. However, I'm getting a lot better at it. Uh, this is the back. I think I welded the front. I, go, I lost track of where I was. It was just a whole bunch of welding. But it works, and it's okay. You can buy shorter bed sides. I own these. I can cut them down for free. Uh, this looks like the front. Yeah, this is the front, so I must have done the back. I might have these in the wrong order. I don't know. Grinder dust got to my brains. Anyways, that's gone all together. Then we'll stick on the front panel spin it around looks like I'm tidying up the welds on the back I'm moving all over the place I don't even know what I'm doing leave me a comment below to let me know what I should be doing with this bed went through a lot of little two inch sanding discs for this thing so it wasn't supposed to be a video on grinding but there we are grinding away then the bed floor it, I spot welded the whole thing all the way across or plug welded or rosette welded because by drilling a whack of holes and welding in each individual spot you keep the heat more localized and you're way less likely to weld the mother loving or sorry way less likely to warp the mother loving snot out of everything. Now if y'all be willing to step this way we'll take a step forward and work on the step. So cutting this one off this has a brace under the bottom I don't know if the shorter steps have a brace I'm gonna put this back on I don't show it in the video because I'm gonna be sandblasting these steps in my cabinet because um, it's winter right now I can't sandblast outside uh, I can but it wastes all my sand um, but I'll put the brace back on once it's been blasted and epoxy primered I did uh, 14 and a half inches out of here and then tried to align as carefully and perfectly as I could. My welding table is half inch plate steel. Um, that kept it lined up fairly well and then I got a couple more of these sweet clamps and I TIG welded it. TIG welding is easier to pinpoint the precision of where you want the weld to go but it also leaves a more malleable weld. And because I wasn't so convinced that I was going to be able to get these steps to line up beautifully and, and hide the join, I wanted a weld that I could move and massage and adjust with uh, hammering and dollies and stuff. It ended up turning out really good. I was able to fill this side with essentially no filler. Um, so it was, a decent, it was a decent fit. This is the other side which didn't weld as nicely, but uh, still it was very easy to shape and straighten and get back aligned. I'll probably do like a, a Raptor bed liner or something over top of the steps just so they don't scratch the paint off so quickly in use. Although really it's a lower truck, you probably don't need the steps. These are new angle strips. The previous one sliced my wrist because maybe it thought I was depressed or something. No, don't even say that. So new angled strips and same thing, I drilled a whack of holes. These are plug welded through the holes to the bed sides. These sides were previously sandblasted on the one good day I had in December for cleaning off the metal. And then they're put in place. The holes in here for the bed sides to attach to the floor are kind of preset. So those holes determine where your cross pieces go. 
And since I'm doing a composite deck, I think I'm going to take one of the extra stringers or cross members and add it to the step side right above the differential just to give it a little bit more support for the composite decks. This is one of the composite boards. It's Trex. Instead of three quarter inches thick, it's 0.85 of an inch. Uh, Winchester gray is the color. I think it looks really cool. Because the floor is raised, but the steps are not, I had to lengthen the mount for the steps. So I just used a four inch piece of uh, two by four box tubing, uh, cut one end open so I can assemble the thing, and then carefully mark down where the holes were, relocated those each four inches down, and then I reattached them. Once they're on, put that cross member into place. It's kind of all held together rickety like a house. It needs the boards to make it work. And there it stands. First time I've ever seen this truck shortened with the shortened bed on it. And my gosh, it is beautiful. Oh, I love this. Leave a comment below. Subscribe. Tell me all about it. And uh, thanks for watching. It's always good showing off the stuff I do.